Each year, Farm Credit Canada releases its Farmland Values Report. This information highlights the changes in the price of farm property in each province and nationally. These numbers are average values. They represent just one of many factors that should be considered when purchasing agricultural land, including fluctuations in commodity prices and interest rates. This report shows that farm property values nationally increased by an average of 10.1% in 2015. This increase represents a trend that has continued over the past two decades. In fact, the last time the average farmland values decreased nationally was in 1992 when it slipped 2.1%. Although the average increase in 2015 was 10.1%, there's more to the story. The numbers across Canada varied considerably. The most significant changes occurred in Manitoba, Alberta, Quebec, and Saskatchewan. Manitoba experienced the highest average increase at 12.4%, followed by Alberta at 11.6%, Quebec came in at 9.6%, and Saskatchewan was up 9.4%. Prince Edward Island farmland values increased by 8.5%. Newfoundland and Labrador saw a 7.7% increase. Ontario was up 6.6%. .6, British Columbia 6.5%. Nova Scotia 6.3%. And New Brunswick was up 4.6%. FCC's Chief Agricultural Economist JP Gervais joins me now to shed some light on these numbers. Uh, JP, what was your initial reaction to these figures? Well, I am thinking of a strong agricultural sector, but we also have to be uh, mindful of a number of facts. It is accurate to point out that the rate of growth in farmland values is slowing down for a second consecutive year, both at the national level and in many uh, key agricultural regions. But when you look at the provincial results, we have to remember that we reported uh, or the number that we reported is an average. And then this year, the differences between the regions of each province uh, varied a lot. Our methodology relies on appraising what we call benchmark farmland and the result that we report is a weighted average of their appraisals in each province. So for example, about half of the areas monitored in Saskatchewan saw little or no increase or a decrease in farmland values and in Ontario it's 40 percent of the areas that experienced a, a similar situation and this occurred to varying degrees in other provinces as well. Hence, we have to be very careful and not see in these numbers that farmland is appreciating everywhere. So this upward trend, it hasn't really changed in about two decades. Have the drivers of the growth changed any? Well, they're basic, basically the same. The drivers behind the overall increase can be summarized by a, a very strong agricultural sector with strong crop receipts and low interest rates. Uh, 2015 is likely to be a record year when it comes to crop receipts and I believe it's fair to say that not many people, including myself, uh, expected 2015 to turn down the way that it did at the beginning of the year. Uh, agricultural commodity prices were coming down at the very beginning of the year as it became clear that available supply of commodities was starting to match the pace of growth in, in demand. Uh, but the low Canadian dollar offset uh, the decline in commodity prices, the loonie lost about 17% of its value in 2015. Uh, the weak, and the weak loony not only makes our exports more competitive, but gives producers a better price for their crops, given that they're mainly priced in US dollars to begin with. So uh, profit margins and demand for agricultural commodities remain strong, mostly due to the low value of the Canadian dollar. And, and the few declines we have witnessed uh, when it comes to farmland values can be attributed to a decrease in the local demand for farmland. Now, there are always some regional factors at play with trends like these. What are some of them this time? Well, absolutely. You know, consider uh, Alberta, for example. Continued strength in the cattle market resulted in increased demand for land that could be characterized as, as less productive in, in some cattle producing areas. And, and in some other areas in Alberta, we definitely witnessed an impact from lower oil prices. Another example is in Saskatchewan, where the greatest increase in farmland values was seen in areas where lentils can be grown. And this speaks again to the, the strength of one sector and how it can impact farmland values. In Manitoba, where we recorded the largest increase in farmland values, a number of small grain farmers exited the industry and the demand for the available land was really strong. Uh, demand for farmland continued to exceed the available supply in Ontario and Quebec. Some producers from Ontario purchased land 
in the Atlantic region where it is more affordable. Um, some operations in supply managed sectors also look to expand their land base, adding to the overall demand for farmland. And I would end with saying that while the, the presence of non-traditional buyers with an investor profile may have contributed to the growing demand of farmland in some areas, but producers still made the vast majority of farmland purchases in 2015. Are we seeing uh, comparable strength in farm property in the United States? Well, this is an interesting question for two reasons. First, farmland values have slightly decreased last year in some of the most expensive land areas in the U.S. And then second, you know, usually the Canadian market for farmland often lags the, the market in the U.S. Uh, but we have to realize that farm income in the U.S. was down in 2015 as opposed to us you know, seeing an increase in farm income. And it was down for, because of a number of different factors. But we were fortunate that uh, the Canadian dollar shielded our markets from lower prices for most commodities, including corn, soybeans, and wheat. So th there could be turbulence in the Canadian marketplace for farmland in our future, but I do expect the turbulence to be uh, in, a, in the form of minimal bumps. The key is if we're able to sustain farm cash receipts, especially crop receipts, at the levels that ne near the ones that we observed over the last five years. Now, we mentioned off the top of the program that there are other factors that need to be considered when you purchase agricultural land besides just these figures. Uh, what do those factors look like at this time? Well, you know, if we expect interest rates to remain low in the immediate future, considering uh, potential sluggish economic growth in Canada for 2016, but nevertheless, I, I, I strongly encourage producers to monitor interest rates and be mindful of their capacity to face higher interest rates in the future. And then 2016 crop receipts should be fairly strong. The best case scenario, I think, for farmland would be for the average value to reach a point of long-term stability where any future increases or decreases are modest and incremental. Final question, I guess, for you, JP, and you've started to allude to this. In the longer term, really, we've got uh, farm property values in this country that have been increasing steadily for a long time. Uh, the overall ag sector has been really rather bullish, you, you know, for the most part since about 2006. If you were looking at purchasing land right now, how would you process these trends into a decision? Well, I would caution producers about using the past few years of profitability as a basis for purchasing land. Profit margins could very well become tighter in the next few years. And just like producers should have a well-defined marketing plan to sell their crops, I, I would advise or I would suggest that producers should also have a thoughtful risk management plan. Uh, this means making sure to understand the, the implications of their work and capital, balance sheet, etc., of a number of different scenarios with regards to, to revenues and expenses. Uh, and let's not forget the positive role the low Canadian dollar has had in 2015 and that one and that never nobody can be sure of how markets will behave in 2016 you know overall i think the outlook remains positive but we need to be cautious as well okay thanks for this jp i appreciate it uh, thank you it was a pleasure and if those watching are interested in reviewing the complete fcc farmland values report you can find it online at fcc.ca farmlandvalues